and I'll turn the time over to Christina. Hey guys, Christina here at Hey Christina Map on social channels. And I'm here representing Zebra Pen today. So all the products you'll be seeing me use are Zebra Pen products that you can purchase at a Michael store or on online on Michael's website. So if you sign up for this class, you know that this is doodling with a purpose. Normally I jump right in, but I wanna start this class out just by talking about the multiple ways that doodling can help your life in general. So the first way doodling can help is it can help you process emotions. So one way scientists have been studying emotions and doodling, it shows that art expression can help individuals recon reconnect thinking and feeling. So while journaling, you can doodle and you can connect your thoughts and your feelings and doodle it out. You can also write it out and then doodle around it. Sorry, I got distracted by my closed captions right there. But um, it also can help you recognize and then express your emotions in journaling, right? Hey, another way doodling can help you is to alleviate stress. So how can doodling alleviate stress? Um, it has shown that for adults, um, lately, as you can probably tell, there's lots of coloring books out there in art stores and Michael specifically, there's lots of coloring books for adults where you can really alleviate stress. So the stress benefiting, um, you know, aspects of doodling is very prevalent. It is great to get your stress under control because it is very simple. It's not complex. You don't have to judge yourself if you do something wrong. It's really, really subjective rather than objective. Um, another way that doodling helps is, um, well, hold on. I missed a couple points about stress relief, but um, I read a study and I'm going to read it. This is from Harvard where it talks about how spontaneous drawing may also relieve psychological distress, making it easier to attend to things. Um, this is what the study said, I'm just reading from it. It says, we like to make sense of our lives by making up coherent stories, but sometimes there are gaps that cannot be filled no matter how hard we try. Doodles fill these gaps, possibly by activating the brain's time travel machine, allowing it to find lost puzzle pieces of memories, bringing them to the present, and making the picture of our lives more whole again. With this greater self sense of self-meaning, we may be able to feel more relaxed and concentrate more. So although doodles might look like scribbles and random words that make no sense to other people, it makes sense to us and can help us retain information. That jumps into another aspect of doodling. It helps us remember things better. Um, there was a study that this Harvard um, that Harvard did as well, where people were given a piece of pad and a paper and they were told to watch a commercial. They weren't told what to do and they weren't told that they were going to be tested on the information that they saw. And what they saw was, was that the people who doodled while they watched this commercial, when quizzed, retained the information 20 times, 29% more than the people who weren't doodling during the commercial. I also wanna point out that there's plenty of precedents or of, like plenty of prolific people that were known to doodle. Um, 26 out of the 44 US presidents were known to doodle. John F. Kennedy doodled dominoes, Theodore Roosevelt doodled children. I think George W. Bush actually like painted people, still might paint people. Um, and studies have shown that doodling actually helps our attention span. So while we go over this class, I want you guys to keep in mind different aspects of doodling and why you want to perfect your doodling. Okay, now take a look at this sheet. This is one of the handouts I gave you guys to print in your um, links that Michaels gave you. In this paper, I'm gonna switch you guys, I'm gonna have Maddie switch us over to my hands now. So I'm gonna get off with my face, one second. Stop video, okay. so. On this piece of paper, you're going to see that there are a couple questions I want you guys to think about during this class. So this is doodling with a purpose. Why do I like to doodle? What can I do to develop this skill? Things I'd like to do with my doodling skills, my commitment to myself and other notes. 
So this is really important for you guys during this class. So you can not only just watch me do something, but it then has a purpose. So take a minute in your head and think about why you might like to doodle. I think different reasons that I just expressed could be for stress relief, um, helping with memory, um, for, uh, let's see, what was another one I mentioned? Process your emotions and et cetera. Um, what can you do to develop this skill? So a couple things I'd like to note that you can do to develop this skill is by taking this class, you're gonna develop this skill even more. You can look up other YouTube videos, you can look up other Michael's classes, and you can learn other skills on how to doodle better. Um, and then things you'd like to do with your doodling skills. So things you can do with these doodling skills are you can journal, you can do bullet journaling, which is a great thing to do. Um, and I'm gonna show you different ways you can doodle as well. Okay, so the first um, couple things, I'm gonna grab my piece of paper here. Um, in the printout that you were given to download, the, we have these random doodle templates. I'm gonna show you a little bit how to do these today, but we're not gonna do that yet. So there are different ways of doodling. Today, you're gonna see me use the Zebra Pen Flick Arts. These are amazing, guys. Um, these are one of the reasons why we're doing this class today is so I can show off these pens to you. Um, right here, you can tell that it is marketed that they never dry out. Let me tell you, I've left these pens out, clicked out like this for two days straight. Well, and then my kids did even more and they literally never dry out. It's amazing. And they just click, they're called click art because they click like this and they have that beautiful bullet tip as well. So a bullet and then you can thin the lines and all that. Okay, so one way we can doodle is by zentangling. So zentangle. I don't know how many of you guys have heard about zentangle before, but you probably have actually seen zentangles. So this is not my art that I'm gonna bust out. I got this from a website by an artist named Sarah Warner. And these are just different types of Zentangles. So Zentangles is a method that is easy to learn, relaxing and a fun way to create images by structured patterns. So these are the patterns. Um, Zentangling is not as rigid as, uh, is a little bit more rigid than normal doodling, but um, you can be really expressive. So they're normally created in three and a half inch square paper tiles and made of a foundation of strings or lines, okay? Like tangles is where it comes from. And it, it does come from Zen because it's very chill as you do it. But normally you see Zen tangles used as Zen doodling. So Zen doodling is taking an object that you like. So I'm gonna add Zen doodling here. And you guys can write um, these down under ways you want to doodle um, because um, you can keep them in mind and then you can look them up later. So Zen tangling is normally just black and white and Zen doodling is normally colors and you don't have to do it a certain way. You could take an object, let's say a star and just fill it with a repetitive pattern. So that's Zen tangling. There are professional Zentanglers that do the most amazing pieces. I am in no way a professional Zentangler, but you can create beautiful pieces doing Zentangling and Zen doodling. This word normally is interchangeable these days. If you're gonna get technical, Zentangle, like I said, is like three and a half inch square tiles, whereas Zen doodling is like really liberal Zentangling, like it's not as structured. Then another way of doodling. So these are ways to doodle. These are just the labels for it. That way, if you guys wanna go in later, um, you can look these up. So then we have Sten doodling, Sten doodling. This is when you take a stencil and you create a piece of art. So I don't have a stencil on me. I just have my cell phone case. So it's essentially taking a stencil stenciling it out and then just using the stencil to make other pieces and making a piece of art out of stencils. Could be really effortless and stress relieving for you to not have to think about the piece of art you're making and just create something all together. 
An awesome aspect that you could use is then take your stencils and do Zen tangling inside of it. So you can combine multiple labels of doodling. Well, uh, another one is, and I'm gonna probably butch butcher it, but mandalas, I think they're ma pronounced mandalas if you're um, technical, but since I'm mandalas. And mandalas are those beautiful circle type doodles where you take a circle and then you add those patterns in the middle and you can sit and create intricate designs. Mandala art um, has taken different colors too to apply different meanings. So when you're making art, you can also, or doodling, you can also um, take in your feelings and emotions with your colors. So with the colors you're using, for example, Red tends to mean, let's see, we'll do red. Red tends to mean strength, high energy, and passion. Pink tends to mean love, intuition, and the feminine. Orange tends to mean creativity, transformation, self-awareness, and intuition. Yellow tends to mean learning, wisdom, laughter, and happiness. Green, I think both these are greenish, so we'll both do that. Tends to mean physical healing, um, love of nature, and caring. Blue tends to mean emotional healing, inner peace and meditation. Purple tends to mean all things spiritual. White, we don't have white. Gray and black is mystery, deep thinking and individuality. So um, those are different ways. You can also target your emotions by picking certain colors with the way you feel and get them out on paper. Um, another um, way to do is literally just freestyle. Now freestyle is what we're really going to focus on on this class today because I love freestyle doodling. Freestyle doodling to me is when you're sitting in a class and you're just on the side of your paper drawing different shapes. I don't know about you but my way of doodling in school was always just drawing certain shapes over and over again. One thing that doodling is also good for is when, look, as I talk, I'm just gonna continue with doodling. Um, one thing doodling is also good for is retaining memory. So if you are still in school, if you are wanting to continue your education and you have a hard time focusing, doodling is another way of fidgeting or using fidget um, abilities to retain that information. Again, like I said, the study that Harvard did was with the commercial and the people doodling. You tend to retain more information while using that processing skill or side of your brain and retaining or using retained information. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I have made complete artworks before and I can look at the artwork and literally remember the book I was listening to or the podcast I was listening to while I made that specific artwork. For example, I have this um, painting that I did of my friend of her face. And I remember exactly what I was listening to. I was listening to, I think it was where the crawdads, not, I think I know it was where the crawdads things. And it was a really good book. And I look at that painting and I just remember that book. It's so funny. So it's proof enough alone for me that it helps us remember information. Last night I was doing a painting of a mountain and I can remember the exact true crime podcast I was listening to while I made certain strokes. Anyway, so doodling is great for that. Where's my responses? So for me, I like to develop my doodling skill just while I'm watching TV. And I like to doodle because it helps me retain information. And my commitment to myself normally while doodling is just to be more um, mindful of it as well. This isn't as mindful. I normally do like heart stars, whatever. Actually, I probably do the entire like lucky charms, heart stars, horseshoes, silver, and balloons, pots of golden rainbows, and my red balloons. But that's also because of my, I'm a 90s child and those were huge. Anyway, okay, so um, I'm going to make sure I don't miss some of your questions while I do this. All right, one thing I wanted to show you guys is a way of sitting, watching a show and doodling while you do that. So 
we have these um, templates and these are for you guys just to practice mindful doodles. Like I gave you some that, like literally I've been doodling this little elephant dude since I was probably in third grade. Don't know who taught me it. Don't know if I came up with it. Don't think I did because that's just too good. I feel like I've been doodling this cow since probably the same time, third grade, same with this giraffe. But because I've just done it over and over and over again, these are just like random doodles. I don't know what that is, but when I made it, I'm like, it looks like something between like a snake and a new, I'm just going to go with it. But, um, I've been, these are just some that I've always just like, either someone taught me or I like just randomly decided to draw it, but I've been drawing these or doodling these for years. Same with these. I've just been doodling these little random signs for years. I'll just fill a page sometimes with like food that I think about. Look, Okay, guys, I'm not even kidding you. It is literally the lucky charms. Hearts, stars, horseshoes, clovers. Um, where's my moon? I have a moon in here for sure. Moon, pot of gold, rainbows in here somewhere. It's literally my, oh, rainbow. And then there's probably a balloon. So it is definitely, I think. Um, and then plants. Something you'll see if you follow me on Instagram is that I do love to draw plants. And I do love to draw flowers. Um, so that brings in, um, and I'm going to show you guys an example of if I'm sitting and watching a show, something I'm going to do. All right. So give me a second while I pull up the things for our next part. All right. I like to use Bristol smooth paper. Um, it's great. You can get this from Michael's. It's just smooth Bristol paper makes the pen smooth you can get them in a spiral notebook form the notebook i was using earlier was just a basic drawing notebook that i got from michael's i can hold on i'll show it to you too because i know you guys are gonna ask um but it's just the i think artist loft basic drawing pad that's great too for just doodling um i recommend when you doodle you fill a page it's filling pages with doodles is so satisfying and Feels graphic. Okay, so I took this picture just while I was visiting my grandma in Massachusetts, and we went to the nursery right down the street from her house. Um, but hypothetically, while I'm sitting watching a show, I've probably drawn my TV stand with my like little fireplace underneath it a hundred times, and I could tell you it's very satisfying. Or I pick out a word from the show and I draw or I letter a word that's being spoken or if someone's talking to me on the phone, I sometimes write down the words people are saying. It really like helps me stay engaged in the conversation. Um, okay, but I also draw from my own images that I take. And here, I just wanted to show you guys, since I did provide you guys with, oh, since I did provide you guys with some plant doodles, I wanted to show you guys how to take either an image or if you're looking at your own plants and bring it to life. So that's the reference image I'm going to use. I'm going to just place it in front of me and I'm going to show you guys how to use it. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm going to grab a color palette to use. And this is where doodling becomes more mindful to me is I'm not just grabbing one pen. I'm actually like, I'll grab, I honestly don't want to spend too much time when I'm doing my doodles because I'm not, honestly, I don't have that much time. So I'm not as mindful, but I just like to think, okay, what colors go best together? And of course for plants, I'm gonna choose the greens and some blues. And actually, you know what? I'm just gonna use this whole color palette right now just because I have it. And that's funny because I probably just mindfully thought, oh, I'm gonna draw that. Okay, now I'm also gonna use these click arts. Guys, I'm not kidding you and I'm not like being paid to tell you to go buy these. I'm just paid to like show you them, but I'm telling you go buy them. There is, I've fortunately been able to use them for over like a few years now to like test them out. That's my art on the front right there. Boop, boop. You can say you took a class from her when you go buy them or something, but um, they're legitimately amazing. And like I said, the big, big win over for me is the doesn't dry out. Okay, so I'm gonna use some of these. I'm gonna use these mild liner brush pens that you can also get from Michaels. This brush pen you can get from Michaels as well as these um, Sarasa clips. So everything you see here, is available online. If you're like me, I like to do the pickup. And I'm gonna show you how to do this. Now, colors don't need to coordinate while you doodle. 
um, you just go for it. So I'm gonna look at this picture. Oh my gosh, guys, look at this. I have the gray top, but I put the purple pen on there. I'm really, really winning. So let me just test out what color this really is because I didn't match it up. Okay, I'm going to not use purple as the base. I'm going to use, let's see what color am I feeling? I'm overthinking it, let's use blue. Okay, so while I do this, I don't even take a pencil. I just, I'm just, imagine me right here sitting and effortlessly just watching TV and I'm just gonna block in the shapes that I see. And I'm going to not worry too much about it. And I'm just going to lock everything in with one color. So right now I'm feeling this color and nothing has to be perfect. You just roll with it, okay? So if you're following along and you want to doodle with me, what I want you to do right now is to pick something that you're looking at in your home. And I want you to um, pick out a few colors and I want it to be the brush pen. If you have one of these brush pens, if not pick out just like a nice marker near you and some pens. And I want you to block out a few things. So right now I just blocked out right here. I just blocked out the base. Okay, and then I'm gonna come in and I'm going to, okay, so now the next thing I'm gonna do, oh, wait, we're gonna add these little, like there's like things holding it up off the ground. What are these cement blocks? You know, they're again, not perfect. Doodling is not meant to be perfect. Just a memory saver right here. And guess what? Every time I look at this doodle now, I will think of you guys. Now I'm going to take a color and see what Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. I think you might have messed with something on your computer and we're picking up static and not able to hear you anymore. Did you set something on your laptop? Oh, did that work? Yes, moving that perfect. Yes. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Okay. Did we miss what I'm trying to think of if I missed anything that was staticky? Thanks guys, sorry about that. So I'm gonna choose these two colors to block the, or to block out some of the pops, okay? So I like to work just with my doodles from what I see, like I see a pot right here, a pot right here, this one's being blocked out right here. Uh, I'm gonna do, let's see, I'm gonna change up the color, put this pot right here. Um, we got just a, all right here that's me blocked by a plant and then come in so in case you missed it because the sound cut out for a second um i just want you guys to go and look at something around you that you might want to doodle while we're doing this little class and i want you to block out the first little um piece right here as you can tell i put blocked out these little um, what are they? They're palettes in this nursery. And I'm going to come in and do a bowl right here. There's a bowl. And then I'm going to do this one for there's a plant that comes up. This pot. And I love, I don't know why, but like, I mean, maybe I could probably explain it why I love doodling plants. I think they're really awesome and abstract enough to be pretty free with them. And there's a block right there. We got some pops back here. Now with doodling guys, I typically sometimes just get anxious myself. I'm just like, ah, oh, fill this in right here. Doesn't need to be exact. Um, and I've taught like almost the same things to my kids when they're doodling. I'm like, nothing has to be exact. Just look at it and play around. Okay, now for the actual plants, I'm gonna just use, I think this one is purple, because I got there. I'm gonna use all these colors for the plants. Okay, so pulling out the plant doodles I made. Here are the pots that you can, that I have, and I've used some of them down here as well. They were in my picture. This one's kind of like a cute little basket. I have a, I was looking at my basket in the corner holding a plant when I made this, and then, 
some basic shapes like this cactus, this eucalyptus. These are two plants I have at home. Another plant I have at home. I was literally looking at my own plants while I doodled these. This one is a cute little plant I have in my kitchen that's just like hanging down. Um, it's so funny. I actually, I think I put in my stories the other day drawing this plant too. And then this one, I just literally sat on my couch making this for you guys while I doodled my plants around my house. That's not a plant I have around my house though, or this one. I just know, like like to do old one. And my pots around my house and made you some plant doodles. Um, so you can look around what you have and just use things as inspiration while you're sitting there wanting to de-stress. Okay, so I'm just gonna work here. I'm gonna think what looks best with what. I also love the mild liners because they're pretty, I mean, they can be pretty opaque and um, go over these areas. So I'm gonna be a little liberal with my plant skills because they're not to be perfect. These are doodles. And I'm gonna just do one color at a time so I don't have to go back. Let's see, this one back here is gonna be this color too. And there's like a, I love them. I don't ever know how to say them, the monstera plants. It's just kind of over here in the corner with almost like a palm. My neighbor has been teaching me all about plants. And so I've been learning the names about them where I wouldn't have known them before. Okay, for funsies, wait, I think I use this for the base. So I'm not gonna use this one. I'm um, using a variety of colors for these plants because it brings this doodle to life. So now I'm gonna use this for, there's a really large, let me show it to you guys again. This really large cactus right here. I'm gonna put that in its plant pot right here. And I'm gonna show you how with the click art, we're gonna go in afterwards and add some detail to this doodle to make it more of a purposeful and a mindful doodle. Um, I just started mindfulness probably like this past year. I have like was just brought into the awareness of the term mindfulness, which is really cool. And I'm trying to be more mindful even when it comes to my doodling and it, being more mindful of like, when I say that, I mean like being more mindful of like, oh, sorry, things we're feeling and emotions we're experiencing and not burying things as we, you know, work through those. So I'm third one back. I think that one's a, that's my head right there, guys. I'm looking at this cactus. I think that's another cactus. Um, not, I don't really want two cactuses the same color, so I'm not going to make that one. Um, that doesn't have a plant in it, but I'm going to make it have a plant in it. I'm going to choose... Well, probably that one. I like, well, I kind of use that there. Let's do more. Anyway, so you can be more mindful in your doodling without fully having your brain activated and being able to just get it on paper. Um, also creating while like stressed or feeling overwhelmed is a super good way of moving past things. Um, Last week I was kind of feeling sad. So I decided to paint my feelings one day and really it helped so much to just get it all out. And I really felt like I processed it so well just by creating art, you know, of how I was feeling, which when I sat down to do it, I thought, oh man, how would I even depict how I'm feeling? So I was like, how do I sit? You know, different ways. Um, okay. We've got, oh, I keep doing that. I want to just keep with the same color. We'll do the cactus one with this now. So this will come in. And we're going to finish the back of these once I get all these plants out. And um, bring it all together. So I love these brush pens because two strokes and look, I've got a cactus. Um, I don't even know what they're called, like stem, you know, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna bring in this cool bluish. So we've got this rubber, guys, that feels so cool. I know the name of this, this rubber plant right here. 
I'm not joking when I said I would draw these and not even know like the name of all of these type of plants. I just thought they'd be pretty and I would doodle them or get them down on paper. But I've had a friend that showed me or told me the names. And that's great. Okay, so I'm gonna add this. Okay, now let's see, we've got a couple more that need to be filled. I like this pinkish. Oh wait, I can use the purple of this gray right here. So let's fill this one. I want like kind of like a droopy plant right here. I kind of like those plants that just like hang and dangle right here. Okay. All right. Then let's see. This one is what do I want? That's kind of like another in the picture, kind of like another cactusy looking one. And again, we don't have to fully keep to what is there. Okay, now lastly, let me just put the back of these palettes. You can't, probably has another lock there. Bam, bam, bam. Okay, then I'm just gonna quickly show you guys that there's another like shelf right here. I'm gonna block that in and put that there. Now also to add some more color down here, I'm gonna to start to color these areas in just with lines, nothing perfect. But let's say I'm just watching a show, looking at this picture, bringing it all together. And the first part, I just bust it all out with mild liners. Then I can just, you know, keep the changeovers last. So there's a, I'm gonna take this, with this palm, there's like a stem. And this monstera, there was more, okay. They're also in this kind of like, this hanging area up here where the plants are hanging. And it's a light room, so I'll put those lines. Okay, now I'm just gonna quickly do some of these again. We'll go in and do the pots first and then I'll add the plants. Um, let's see, I'm gonna do the same pot. So we have a pot right here, there's a pot. And I'm not looking at the way it angles. I'm not, I'm just worried about shapes and getting them down. Um, one thing I just realized that I skipped over with you guys that I wanted to go over. So I'll pause this after I get these pops down um, that I think is important while doodling. That pot is like on its side in the picture. Um, is It's really important just to Remember, and I know it seems rudimentary, but remember your shapes. So let's see here. Where is, I'm gonna grab another piece of paper. I'll just use the back of this, waste less things. So just remember the different shapes you have. We have um, curved shapes, we have diagonal shapes, we have straight shapes, we have zigzag shapes. We have wavy shapes, we have parallel shapes, uh, like an outline of a shape. Um, we have a, a horizontal line. Oh wait, I did that. Vertical, perpendicular are different kind of shapes. We also have more like geometric shapes. We have triangles, squares, we have stars. Um, rectangles, ovals, arrows. Like these are just shapes that you'll incorporate while you doodle. Sometimes you guys should take a night, maybe as homework, you can take a night and make those shapes. These are more like freeform shapes with the zigzag or a leaf shape or let's see, uh, like a butterfly shape, which is an E and a three backward or an E and a three. and. I like the butterfly right there. And, um, you know, free form is like a cloud, but to just be aware of like the different shapes that you can just make with your pen without thinking are really important when it comes to doodling as well. Like 
I can just make a wind. Oh, you can't see as well. A window pane right there by just grouping shapes together. I can make a peace sign. Wait, hold on. I was. Oh, I messed up. Well, it's backwards now. Um, while just grouping shapes together. Um, oh, it's like a bunny, but also a peace sign. Anyway, okay. So right now, as I'm, I thought about that because I'm just grouping a bunch of little shapes together at this point um and merging them to create an art piece so right here i'm going to add my let's see a nice little cactus some flora stuff this one this snake have that i like this little cactus that's right here i like cacti but I always somehow like murder it I never know if I'm watering it too much or too little so I gotta stick with the basic plants that I just water every Monday it's just easier for me otherwise I will be a murderer of plant vegetation yeah okay this one I'm just gonna make a palm and a palm can't keep those alive I guess they're you gotta keep that dirt pretty damp and I always forget. So I also like those plants that have those like beads that droop down and make this like one of those beaded plants. Um, okay, let's carry on. And right here, okay. So here we have, oh wait, I wanted to make this one in the corner. This is like a nice, I think it's more of a rubber plant. That's right here, chunk coming out. Let me move this up, sorry guys. And it frees up like this, it's in the foreground of this. Okay, see how cool it is that these mild liners can like do so much drawing and doodling for you. It's cool because it does have the bullet chip on this end. I'm gonna quickly take, um, also I like, if I don't remember what color is which, sometimes I just like put it right there. So this one is this color. So I'm just gonna go in and quickly fill these a little bit. I like the white in there, so I'm not gonna fill it in on every single one. Even with doodling, I sometimes like to keep in mind where the sun could be coming through. Oh wait, the sun would be coming through here, but it's a green house that could be coming through here. We'll keep it coming through here. Okay, color done and bam, 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 bam. Okay, then I'm gonna take this lighter blue, come in and get those pots where the plant isn't touching. Oh, no, that's okay, okay. This one, okay. And uh, Oh, I missed that, but we'll come back. Okay, now with let's bust out that clay cart that I am obsessed with. And I'm gonna take a matching, I'm gonna, you can take a matching color, a complementary color. So red and green are complementary, do purple and yellow. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this, hmm, I don't know, what should I do? Should I do complementary? Uh, let me look at this. Okay, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start with this color. And for this color, I'm gonna take this color. And so what I'm gonna do here is you're gonna see, I'm gonna add some details. So I'm gonna take it in mind these lines and I'm going to create some details. So I can come in and make a leaf if I want right here, or I can come in and I can add some cool lines on it to add some texture and come in and add an extra leaf down here with detail or up here that wasn't placed down before. Like it's fun to add detail to a piece that didn't exist before you came in and add some lines, maybe just the middle line here. I'm going to, let's see right here, just outline this outer edge. Maybe outline this outer edge, come in and add just a little texture on this side. Maybe some cross hatch. Okay, I like the way that looks. All right, now this color, I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna just keep it all 
the same, so I don't have to think much about matching more colors. This one, I'm just gonna completely just add some detail on top of it. The bonus about this clip art is it is a bullet chip, I mean tip, excuse me. So it's fun to create those lines. Okay, that's cool, I like that. All right, this one's a little like flower thing. One of my favorite things to do is to add lines where lines didn't exist before. And that looks great. Come in, okay, I'm gonna do that with that. Just gonna add these lines there. This is the palm, so squiggly. Oh, I'm out of the picture. And there you go. Now that's a, a monstera, I never say it right. I know it's spelled monster with an A. And okay, perfect. This one, let's come in and go right here. And I'm gonna out on the side of that, the side of that, add another plant there, create some lines there. Bam, bam, bam. Guys, I can't even tell you how like nice and therapeutic this is doing this with you on here. So that one was the one falling down. This didn't have a plant. So I'm gonna come in and do almost like a plant that is, is bursting out without anything underneath. Okay, awesome. I love the way that came together. Now I'm gonna come in and match another one. I like this one, but do I want to add this blue on top or do I wanna save it for the pot? For the pot, I could use, I'm gonna use this like blue for that. I kinda like that look. So let's come in. And this pot is empty, my picture. You'll see I kinda do the same type. I like this shape a lot, obviously, with the round um, leaf. I also like the lines a lot. It's just like a go-to doodle, I guess, of mine that I've just, Always done. This one I think we decided was a palm. So I'm gonna make it look more like a palm with that nice color in the background. Bam, bam, bam. And this one was a hanging down one. I remember that, like the pearly leaf, pearly leaves hanging down. My son had one of these in his room. He is six and he Loved it, but for some reason it kept getting knocked over. So we had two plants out of this room. Was over dealing with dirt. Okay, I'm just gonna add dots here. Oh, another type of doodling I should have mentioned is doodling with dots, guys. Oh my gosh. You just sit there, have an object and fill it in with dots. Oh, it is so fun. Also very time consuming, which is good if you have a really long movie. Um, let's see, I'm gonna take this color and remind myself what that is. I actually am gonna use this pinky color, not for this pink. I think that'd be fun for this pop, this pop color. So I'm gonna take the pink and I'm gonna put it down with this hot color. And I'm gonna just do a bunch of different shapes to fill in this nice blue one. And again, there's no right or wrong way to doodle here. And I hope as you're, if you're doing this from home, you're just matching and playing around. And if you're watching, you feel inspired to sit and watch a show or listen to a book and just get out some of that energy you need to get out onto a piece of paper. Um, and okay, so let's see, I did that, I did that. Um, let's come in now. We did this darker green. I'm going to do the lighter green. I'm going to do this lighter green for this. Little, oh, where I did that. Let's do what we need that blue for this cactus right here. You know, I like to do on little cactuses that I'm like cute little flower. That's cute. Okay. I'm going to save, I'm going to do this lighter green with this darker pot throw it off a little bit, change that. Bet you didn't expect that one. Talking myself up over here. Um, and bringing that together. Okay. Again, like I said, no right or wrong, just putting out objects that you kind of see 
in a cool way without worrying about dimensions. I mean, you can tell there's a point of um, point of view going on here, but not quite worried about the rest. I actually can add like they have like a path of like a brick road, like walkway. I guess I could add it here. And that's where you could, um, actually I'll just watch this. I'm gonna come in with this mild liner. If you layer it on top of each other, mild liners are great. They don't bleed through the paper, but it can add that darker um, stroke if you layer the color on top of each other. So it creates a, um, a different tone, I guess would be the word. Okay, great. And then with the bullet side of it, I could come in and even, you know, add the pathway if I wanted to. A cool thing about the mild liners too is, although they don't have like the same um, selling point of, they don't dry out if you leave the cap off, you could still use the bullet chip as a way of accenting on um, the piece where I'm doing, you know, the um, click art. So let's see, let's see, we need to do this color and I'm going to do this color. I don't want to use orange. I'm going to use that color. I'm going to use gray on this pink actually. I think that'd be fun to add some gray and even add some prickly things to this cactus. Don't want to go too much. And come here. Okay. Nice little plant bottom. Bam, bam, bam. Cool doodle. Okay, now we have one more. This per oh, mix one in the corner. Okay, awesome. So we have one more. Wait, did I do that? No, I didn't do this color. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to use this bullet chip tip. Let's see. Is that great? Yeah, I like that. I'm using the bullet side of the smile liner to do kind of like the same technique of outlining right there. Gotta love it when one marker or pen does the same thing. Okay, as you can tell, I left some areas open on not with ink and that's where we're gonna get this Sarasa clip in here. I like the black just to add those darker tones into the piece to kind of bring it all together. And I'm just gonna do that on places I hadn't outlined yet or just added, you know, the details. So just gonna come in and do this. And now this is where it gets funky. And the, like also other doodling comes in for me is I'm gonna come in and place other like shapes. So if I want like more of a gap between the white here, I can add like a cool shape there. I can add shapes here. I can look for the natural shapes in the picture. I can look for the natural shades. I can see that there's like, you know, boards holding up this table, even though it doesn't necessarily look like that. I can see there's gravel on the ground. So I can add like, just like use that as like inspiration to just place things on the ground. And for no rhyme or reason, just noodle around and fill that page. And um, another thing to do to fill the page is you could um, these are the shapes. 
Okay, another thing you can do is add a quote. So, for example, let's see, where's the spot 10? Um, like, let's say I left that open, or even now, I can um, add a quote. So, since the class is doodling with a purpose, doodling, you can do cute little lettering with. A yes. I can also take this and add to, oh, that's my hair right there. Add to this piece. As you can tell, and I said earlier, my go-to doodle is normally my name. That's actually kind of my signature right there. Or arts. Anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for coming to this class today. And as we finish up, I just want to remind you guys of um the paper that was in the email that was either sent to you or the, the link to print it out it's in the chat above where i do want you guys to start being more mindful with your doodling that way you can relieve stress you can um you know get a, emotionally uh, more aware you can have a better memory you can be more mindful and by being more mindful you can have more of a purpose with your doodling and you can really see the benefits of doodling. I also like to think of it as a time machine where you can remember things if you look at a certain piece. So don't throw your pieces away. Keep on to them so you can just remember certain moments. Again, thanks for coming and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.